at the same time you're feuding with Beefcake, the Warriors' ascension is happening yes. on television. Yes. So are you putting two and two together at all? As you're no, not them? at all. That no. that was not even. I, you know, I, I, I to be perfectly honest, Sean, I didn't look around and see who they and how they were maneuvering other people because at that point in time I was playing defense. Mm. I was protecting what little time I had left the best way I could, which was to then push harder, do more interviews, do better interviews. That, at that point, I think my interviews became better because I was more hardened now. I was more edgy, more, yeah. more backbone and more, I know you're going to get rid of me, go fuck yourself. And I would say things on the interview that just pointed to the fact that I'm the greatest of all time. And that's kind of when I started really hammering that home. Yeah. I mean, I kind of just kept, I it was like, I'm going to say this. And even if they tell me not to say it, I'm still going to say it. What are your casual interactions with the Ultimate Warrior at this time? Uh, you, none. None whatsoever. None. He was, he was in a program with uh, Hercules, Hercules Hernandez. And... I, he, Jim Helwig was an extremely quiet, humble, shy guy in the locker rooms around people. He kind of stayed to himself a lot. Uh, uh, I don't even know who he was traveling with back then. Uh, uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if Kerry Von Erich was in at that time. Maybe not. If if Kerry was around, I know that he traveled with him some. But I think that's that was later. Imagine those discussions so, in the car between. Holy shit. But they knew each other from Dallas. Yeah. So, but anyway, Massive back to up. back to him. I, I didn't keep up with what he was doing. Uh, I didn't keep up with the tag team situation. I wasn't involved in it. I know that they started maneuvering Jimmy towards other people. They gave him uh, was it the Mounties? Maybe by about that point in time, and then they gave him. Uh, not tugboat. Well, who was the other big guy? Uh, um, John Ty Tenta. Typhoon. Ty Ty Typhoon. Uh, Jimmy had started to manage more people, more and more people, mm -hmm. and, and well, earthquake. It might have been earthquake. Earthquake. That's Absolutely. who it was. Yeah, it was earthquake. And 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 was not then being so much on the road with me. Sometimes he was then going with the Mounties, mm -hmm. who was going against the Hearts, and. I could see that little movement away from me that direction. So, but but that was normal. I, I I mean I could feel what was going on. Must have been very uncomfortable to kind of be you know like the animal it, it that's was, dying and everybody. It, it, kind it, of... was, it was yes. I mean yeah. You're I mean you're wounded and uh, and uh, this business is hard. It's cruel and you leave the wounded behind. And, and so you pick up the pieces and you do the best you can and finish your run the best you can on a good note. When they say the main event, uh, the, the Intercontinental title match at SummerSlam is going to be Honky Tonk Man and Brutus Beefcake, um, was it going to be Brutus Beefcake? Absolutely not. Okay. So not the thing with uh, the angle with Ron Bass when he gives I, him... I knew, I knew now, you, okay, <clears throat> before you get, okay, we'll talk about the, okay, Ron Bass does the angle where he takes the spur, yeah. he hurts Beefcake, so Beefcake cannot be in the yeah. match. Uh, that was all going i already knew prior to that the it was going to be the ultimate warrior and this is where we're going oh you did vince actually like you said earlier did he pull you off to the side did you and him right. talk no he talked to those people macho and liz and then to jimmy and then looked at me for 30 seconds or 10 seconds and said I was going to be rebuilt, and then looked away, and never he never even really said goodbye to me when I left the office. If I remember, I didn't really care if he said goodbye. I mean, I, my goodbyes were over when he told me to drop the elbow and sashay Liz and put a rocket in right, your ass right. and send you to the moon. And, oh, well, okay, well, what part of the universe am I going? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> But for Warrior... For Warrior, he treated me uh, like... A man and a talent and he s said I want to talk to you a minute and sure at that point in time if he said you're fired I was ready 
Right. I just shook his hand and said, I appreciate everything. I didn't care. Right. I did not care. I How far out? I did not care after, after that meeting in that office. Right. I did not care anymore. I didn't give a shit. You'd be if they walked in and they fired me mm -hmm. that day and told me to pack my bag, I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have said a word. I'd have said, sure. Thank you so much. I've got freedom. I'm gone. But what, I had my bag ready to go at any minute, at any fucking minute. But what kind of money are we talking about that you would have been giving up? What, what, give me a night and a sellout in Toronto. That's With uh, myself and Macho? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Uh, five grand, eight grand. That's five nights a week. No, Maybe it, six. Yeah. What? I was doing 10, 12, 15,000 a week, 18,000. It didn't matter. It didn't matter anymore. It was beyond the money. I guess. I'm just basking in that. Was, and that's 1988 dollars too. It was by the beyond way. the money. But I knew from that conversation in that office that day that from then on, Randy was making or had been making a lot more money than I probably was, and Liz was making more than 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 uh, uh, Jimmy. I just knew that. After that, I knew it. Even though you had the strap. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that their money was had gone way up. Their stock had gone way up. You're having a meeting with Dick Ebersol, these two people? What about me? I'm involved in this match too, Ebersol. So how far out does he talk to you about Warrior? <laughs> what the fuck did Ebersol have to do with it anyway? I don't know. I don't either. That's why I asked you before. <laughs> why, was it a social call or was he telling us I have no how idea. to prance her around the ring so the cameras could best uh, catch the, light, the, gl the glint in her eye? Well, I don't know. Glint, has anyone said that on a fucking shoot? Why didn't he call me in there and say, okay, here's, what we want, here's how we want you to stand when you hit Randy with the guitar and how you're going to push Liz down so that we... I wasn't privy to any of that shit. It was like, okay, honky, you're going to... The hearts are going to run in. If you push Liz, they're going to be... Oh, oh, okay, that's my form of direction. They're over there getting wine to dine at Eversol's big mansion in, 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 in Greenwich, Connecticut, you know. <laughs> I don't, I'm surprised they didn't fly them over by fucking helicopter, but that's neither here nor there. They might have. That, but so back to the warrior. Yeah. How far out is he talk, talk to you about what's going to happen in August? Oh, you're saying August, so <sighs> April, May. Okay. He's way out. It was. It was about six or eight weeks after. When was the Saturday night main event? I can kind of... Oh, well, here's the thing. Beef WrestleMania with Beefcake, where you start the angle, was March 27th. So, um, f then you had uh, the, the Ron Bass thing happens on August 3rd. Okay, we're going back, go back about two months. Then. Okay. So, so I was pretty May. close. May, June. Okay. May, June, somewhere in there, yeah. He treats you like a man. He says, calls me I in, need calls to. me in, and says, uh, uh, you know, Hogan's got a Hogan's want to go to do movies and all these things, and and I I need to, we need to make some changes, and uh, I've got this guy, this Ultimate Warrior, and I would I, I would really appreciate it, and if. I want to put the belt on him. I need to maneuver him in a position, and I'm going to go with him all the way. And I said, really? I said, yeah. He said, I, I see something in this guy. I know nobody else does. None of you, none of <laughs> you. But he said, I need someone, and if you can do this. I said, no problem. I said, however you want it done. Right. And... I said, but it needs to be short. He said, I don't care how you do it. It's up to you. Okay. You do it your way. Yeah. I know you'll make it good. And that was it. Case closed. And I got ready to get up and I, and uh, to leave. And he said, but I am going to need some return matches. I said, oh, fuck, man. You're really kicking me in the balls now. And we laughed. And I said, sure. I mean, return matches. Warrior was really rough. I mean, I hadn't been in the ring with him, but 
I had, you know, once once I knew I was going to be with them, I went to Hercules. I said, "Hi, is this guy?" He says, "Oh, you dread getting up in the morning." Why? And I bit the hook, and he had me like pulling me in. Why would I dread getting up? He said, "Because you know what you have to face that night." What? So after one night with the warrior, I dreaded the next morning getting up because I knew what I had to face again that night. So it did, the prophecy did come to be true. Yes. Hercules' yes, prophecy. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, but we always did. If we didn't know it. Now, if I knew, if I, if I know Lanny Poffo and I know S.D. Jones and they say, you guys are working together for the next six months, I don't have to go ask someone, how is Lanny Poffo? Right. How is S.D. Jones? How is Pedro Morales? I mean, I know these guys. I, I, I'd never, I don't know this warrior. I didn't know where he came from. I didn't know any history on him. I just know that him and Hercules were out there beating each other like, like bulls in a ring mm. every night, and it was physical. And if they, he, Herc would come back all beat up. Herc was a big guy too, and uh, but he told me it was, it was bad. So, I, I prepared for. Because once I knew that, then when Vince said I'm gonna need return matches, it was like, ah, uh, okay. And he said, I don't care what you do. He said, you can work with a guy on the front row. Just get him over. I have a quick question for you. Um, for television, so that they would have video of Warrior with the belt, what they did before the match, this is confusing. Follow it. Yeah. They would do a taping before the title change. Yeah. First match, dark match, Honky would come out and lose to the Warrior, who would take the belt, so yeah. that he could appear on the tapings that night with a title, would make sense to the fans in the house. End of the night, Jack Tunney would come out and go, no, 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 there was no title change. Right. So in the fans' mind, you still had the belt. but, but the, So you did have to lose to him prior yes. for a dark match. Yes. Was it a quick one? Like the... Uh Pretty much, it was it was similar. I think it was it was pretty much very very similar. But I, I knew that I, I didn't want to du duplicate it because I'm from the old school where we don't do the same thing that people okay. know. Okay. But uh, he he had he had beaten me somehow with Jimmy and I colliding together and some of that like kind of what I did with with uh, with uh, Steamboat and I'd watched a match not so long ago. Someone posted on Facebook with me and Jimmy Snook at the Garden, and uh, one of the things where same situation, a leapfrog up, Jimmy's there, hit him, crash, come back, slam, splash, one, two, three. Gotcha. It's, yeah. Okay. So uh, I always like to, if I had a chance when I put finishes together, I did them like the old Memphis style where there's a lot of, a lot of shit going on. Bing, and, bang, boom. I mean, yeah, a lot yeah. of shit going on. It's a slow match, and all of a sudden, you better get ready because something's going to happen. And, but, it, yeah, I had, I had lost to him on uh, those TV tapings okay. that way in different ways. And also to to kind of get a feel for what might be the best way to get this over now, which was a good idea to get a little warm up with the guy before you actually mm. go into a SummerSlam match where where it's a big feature match. Yeah. Well, well, it actually wasn't a feature match, but me being the Intercontinental going against Beefcake, it had been a fe it was a feature attraction, and they're going to run this guy out. So let's. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my job and get the guy over. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be a, a a complete prick. I already had been by not doing the Saturday night main event thing. So uh, I had a match scheduled with the Warrior on a not with the Warrior on. A, yes, no. Terry Taylor on a Saturday night main event. Now, mm. I didn't have the belt, I don't think. I'd have to go back. Okay. But they had promoted me against the Red Rooster. Mm -hmm. And did all the interviews for it, all the lead up and everything. And then the night of the show, they pulled the rooster and said, you're working with a warrior and we got need to get him over. Now this is Saturday night main event on national TV. And I said, sure, no problem. I th he had the belt at that point in time. I think he did, yes. But they had me boxed in now to lose on, not on pay-per-view, but on... TV again. Yeah. Yeah. 
I didn't I, losing on a pay per view was not like losing on the syndicated network. It was a bigger deal to lose on nationwide TV, like a Saturday night main event, mm -hmm. or the syndicated shows, and it was to lose on a pay per view because only a few handful of people bought the pay per view. Right. Not millions of them like they do nowadays. You know, 500,000, 600,000 people maybe back then. Who knows? That might be a good number. So there wasn't like worldwide pay-per-view. People around the world weren't buying it. Right. But they had me boxed in. Because no if I had said, well, no, I'm not going to lose again to the Warrior on Saturday Night Main Event in Tampa. I know it was in Tampa. I remember it very well. Uh, they would have said, pack your bag, you finished. I said, sure, no problem. Right. And I did it. But that was like the last job match that I did on TV. Further for down, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for him on TV. I didn't do any more jobs on TV mm -hmm. for him. I did the jobs every night thereafter doing return matches. And house shows you're talking yes, about. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. where, where he had the belt. But that was the one they did get the one on national TV. Mm. They got that one. All right. They ever, never advertised it, and here's why. If they had advertised Warrior against me on the Saturday night main event, I think they would have said he won't do it. Right, because you'd know what you'd have to do if they're, they're not going to switch the title again. And I already refused to do it right. on one national TV show. So they set it up where it was Terry Taylor, and it was never meant to be Terry Taylor. And Terry did interviews that day for cutaways, thinking he was working with me. Right. And he got bumped, because he thought he was going to get a good, Saturday Night Main Events had a good payday. You know, they paid mm -hmm. five grand, 3,500, 4,500, mm -hmm. five grand. He was thinking, gosh, he's finally, as a Red Rooster, going to get a payday. And then at the last minute, he got bumped. Then I knew. Yeah. They got me. I knew. I knew two hours before the show. They got me. Did you get on the phone? Honey, coming home. Nah. No? <laughs> nah. I just called home. I said, they got me boxed in. How's that? I said, well, they advertised the Red Rooster. They just pulled him and stuck the warrior in. She said, you going to do it? I said, sure. Why not? I'm right. finished anyway. <laughs>